Evans Real Estate Team, and I've got Shauna Snare here with me today. I'm so excited from Premier Mortgage. And I'm going to ask, should I get a fixed or variable mortgage in 2023? This is a big loaded question. I was going to say, it's a very loaded <laughs> question. And you know what? I have the same conversation with every client, and I have had since I started, and I've been a broker since 2006. So um, the biggest thing is it's a personal comfort thing. So, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So some people, if you're not gonna sleep at night and you can't have mutual funds, well then variable's not great for you. Uh, but if we look at historically, you know, what the economists have suggesting, what has happened in the past, then you're always going to win out with variable. Right mm -hmm. now is a very hard time to say that to someone because the variable rates are higher than fixed, which... And people are fearful. We don't know what's happening. It's terrifying. So we did have a Bank of Canada announcement yesterday. There was no increase, which was exciting. Oh, yay! Right? That's exciting, which we did expect. So, okay. you know, hopefully that we see it ride out and at least maintain rather than increase over the next little while. But what we'd really like to see is it, it come back down and then that variable becomes more attractive. But right now it's, you know, people are taking shorter terms just because we are hearing that rates are going to come down over the next, you know, 24 months. I heard somebody told me that during the federal election, mm -hmm. there's going to be a big issue that comes up and this is a government imposed recession versus a actual recession. Right. And so there's a lot of talk on that too. And there's a lot of talk on different topics because a lot of the things that they uh, didn't expect, like the unemployment rate is mm -hmm. higher than they expected, for example. Right. So there's a lot of things that we we can't account for. We don't know. We don't have a crystal ball. Right? And that's the biggest thing. Like people are always like, well, what would you do? What What are rates going to do? And mm, I wish I knew. But, you know, it's just a comfort thing. You know, it, you have the opportunity to save a lot of interest if you go on the variable side down the road. But again, it really just is going to come down to can you sleep at night? No, Playing the game. Mm -hmm, absolutely. We're taking a risk. Absolutely. So a fixed mortgage. Tell me what is a fixed mortgage. So a fixed mortgage, you're just choosing a specific term. So it can be one year, it can be five years. There's up to 10. I've never done a 10-year term for anyone. Okay. Um, but typically it's one to five that people would choose. And you know what your payment is going to be for the next set amount of time. You know what your payment is. And at the end of that term, then you would have the opportunity to choose a new term. But what happens during it, so say, for example, we took a five-year term. Yep and you wanted to sell your house in two years and move away. Well, if you're not gonna buy a new house, then you're going to pay a penalty on that time that's remaining in your term. Mm. So people have to be very, and we'll have that conversation, you know, like when we're choosing, what is, your, yeah, what is your plan? You know, are you planning to live here forever and ever, which not usually the case, yeah. but some people, <laughs> you know, or are you living here for two years and you know you're gonna get posted? Yes. You know, those things all come into play. What is your, and things change, you know, it's like, strange. Plans change, life's change, yes. you know, goals change. So, you know, those things could, you know, that could impact you. So we don't want to get in a position where somebody's going to pay a big penalty, you know, if they're going to end up moving in a few years. Yes. Mm -hmm. And with the unknown that's happening over the next couple of years, I'm thinking that my personal uh, would be a fixed for like two to three years. And a lot of people right now. Uh, so I've been doing, I'd say... Of the, in the last six months, it's been shorter terms, two and three year, uh, okay. and still variable. Oh, still variable mm -hmm. as well. Okay. So the five years a little harder for people to, you know, commit to just because yeah. we are hearing rates will be down in 24 months ish. Yeah. Uh, and so if they are and you're locked into a five year term, then you know your penalty would be higher than okay. someone who's locked into a three year term. And should we explain what a variable mortgage is? Yeah. So the difference with the variable is it's based on the Bank of Canada prime rate. Uh, most lenders offer, di offer a discount off of the prime rate. So right okay. now we're at 6.7 as okay. our prime rate. So okay. if we're buying a house and we're uh, moving into a new home and we're doing less than 20% down, then the discount that lenders are giving right now is 0.9 off of 6.7. Okay. Okay. So that would leave us with a starting rate of 5.8. And we're mid-March 2023, just for Mid-March 2000, yes, exactly. So. so the discount is the biggest thing or enticement for people to still take that variable. Okay. Because when rates drop, they'll still maintain their discount that they had originally. So the biggest benefit to the variable is that the penalty is only ever three months interest. Okay. That's so the that biggest is, benefit to the variable. Yeah, that's it's the biggest. Only three months if you're if you unsure. Break your, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. If you're unsure, then that's a great thing to know. Absolutely. And you Absolutely. can also lock a variable. So if you take variable and you're uncomfortable with it, you can lock that in down the road without a penalty. Oh. The only thing is, is that you're going to be subject to whatever rates the bank is offering at that time, at that time. right? You're not negotiating with your broker anymore. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
Now, what are the different lengths of terms? You said two years. Well, there's one, years. two, three, you know, there's, there's up to 10, but what happens is people are, too many things can happen in a 10 in year ten time years, frame yeah. that, you know, no one typically locks into that. I'd say five is pretty average except for right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And um, what happens when it, your time to renew comes around again? So your Yeah, so your five your year term, term your say yeah. if you take a five year, three year, say for example. So say, let's say we take a three year term because again we're talking short term rates. Yeah. So what's gonna happen is about six months out, nine months out sometimes from your renewal, depending on the lender, you're gonna get notification. As a broker, we would be reaching out okay. just to say you're coming up for renewal. What are your plans? Are you moving? Do we want to do some renovations? Do you just want to renew the balance that's on your mortgage? And then what we would do is we would just choose a new term or maybe they've decided they're going to stay there and add some space to the property yeah. with that, you know, the renovations uh, and not look for a new home so we could add money at that time as well. So once again, it's a very personal question yes. with your personal needs, yes. your personal comfort level and what's going on in your life. I know with Phil and I in real estate, we always ask people, what are your dreams? Yeah. We want to know your dreams because we can't tell you the solutions Absolutely. unless we know Absolutely. what your long-term goals is. So what are your three-year goals, five-year goals? Where do you see yourself Because retiring? your advice may totally change. It totally mm -hmm. changes Absolutely. based on your specific situation. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I really enjoyed having Thanks, Shauna yeah. here with us. Um, if you've enjoyed it, please like the and subscribe and you can see more. See you later.